Welcome back to Columbus. Released today, details on the Olympic qualifying schedule for the Americans. And they're going to be starting things off in Houston in Group A, along with Costa Rica, Panama, and Haiti. Group B gets underway as well in Texas. The semifinal and final we played in Carson, California. Just moments ago, Alex Curry caught up with Carly Lloyd. Carly, it's only been a week, but as a veteran on this team, what have you liked about what Vladko has done with this group? You know, I think uh, he's old school. He's got a philosophy. Um, he's trying to implement it, and I think he just gives the, the belief, belief in players. And, um, you know, I'm really excited to see what, what this team is capable of under him, and uh, should be a great evening tonight. And you're starting with Press and Tobin up top. What do you feel like you need to show Vladko against Sweden? Um, you know, I think we just have to be dangerous up top. Um, you know, my job to hold the ball and press and Tobin to, to get down on the flanks. And I think overall, you know, we're work, working on building out of the back, midfielders connecting, and just trying to be a little bit more sophisticated to get into that final third. And uh, I think, think it's going to be great. Well, good luck tonight. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate it. She is your all-time active Caps leader currently, and boy, does she want to make a first impression tonight. You know, 2019 is starting to wind down. They've only got two games left, which includes tonight. But this year didn't start off the way many had hoped. The U.S. closed off a, a year that started with them dropping their first match of the year. Jill Ellis' side turning in a listless performance in a 3-1 friendly defeat to France. Concerns only grew following a disappointing campaign at the She Believes Cup. The U.S. held a draws by Japan and England, their only victory coming against Brazil. But from the moment the World Cup began on Fox this summer, the Americans showed they had no intention of relinquishing their crown. They opened the group stage with a record 13 to nothing demolition of Thailand. France thought to be the biggest obstacle on the way to a repeat, and the U.S. disposed of them in the quarters. Megan Rapino backing both goals in a 2-1 win in Paris. And then Rapino also leaving her mark in the final while Rose LaBelle supplied the other goal, the Americans knocking off the Netherlands to seal a second straight World Cup crowd. So Jill Ellis concluded that this was the perfect way to go out. She announced shortly after the World Cup that she would step down as manager, passing the baton to Vlatko and Anofsky. She did stay on for the victory tour, which meant surpassing Tony DeChico for most wins by a U.S. manager that lost to France back in January it remains the only defeat of 2019. The Americans unbeaten in 21 matches since then. So a monumental 2019. Alexi, we'll start with you. What was your biggest moment from this year? Uh, biggest moment? Uh, okay, look, this is a team full of big, bold, at times arrogant, beautifully arrogant personality. It's what makes them great. What's, ma what's made them successful uh, is what's made them legends. A listener is not that type of player. She's not big, bold, brash in anything that she does. Hope Solo casts a very, very long shadow, and coming into Hope Solo's shoes and being the goalkeeper for the U.S. Women's National Team, at times it can be lonely, and you are asked to make that one save. That save she made against England on the penalty, I was so happy for her. You saw how happy her teammates were for her, for her to have that moment. It's almost the anti-type of player in who she is as a uh, as a goalkeeper and as a personality. It was a wonderful moment to be there. That's something I'll never forget. Heather, what's your big moment from 2019 for this team? You know, for me, there wasn't one moment. I think the entire World Cup, the U.S. made a cultural impact. I mean, they had the following of the entire country. I think in the past, this team has been known as America's sweethearts. Very wholesome, very pure. Now they're known as America's badasses. And I think that in the U.S., right now in particular, that's a really important message for women and for young girls. So I think there was their impact uh, to, to win it and their impact the way that they want it. They're brash. They're unapologetic for their excellence. It's the things they do off the field as well as on the field. And we want to bring Ali Wagner into this conversation. Ali, come join us. What was your biggest moment? You were at all of these games. What was the biggest takeaway for you in 2019? It had to be the quarterfinal match against France in Paris. I mean, this was a team, I think the only team that some of the players feared. It was a team that I think caused a lot of nightmares for Jill Ellis because when you look back at some of the results they had in January of 2017 in the She Believes Cup, Jill Ellis was experimenting with things. She went into three back. She put Allie Long in the center of that three back and guess what happened? They got shellacked and there were a lot of questions being asked about whether or not Jill Ellis was the right manager to take this team to the World Cup. 
Flash forward, 2019, January. Guess what? France puts another three past the U.S. They go down 3-1. So as they march into Paris and they're able to exercise those demons, the crowd, the way they went up early, got the crowd silenced and then sat back in a shell and asked questions that France really had no answers for. That will always be etched in my mind because the night before that match, I'd never seen Jill Ellis so relaxed when we met with her. And I think all the preparation, all the wrinkles that she talked about, the tactical nuances that she was going to have in her back pocket. She had prepared the team, and now it was time to sit back and let them do the rest. Allie, thanks. Look, there's still some soccer left to be played this year. Vlatko doesn't get an easy test in his very first game. It's Sweden and the USA. When we return, John Strong and Ali Wagner will be on the call. Should be a great one here in Columbus. This match on FS1 is sponsored by Volkswagen, the presenting partner of U.S. Soccer. Tonight, the Vladko Andonovsky era for the United States women gets underway from the frozen tundra of Moffrey Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. A frigid night here in one of the spiritual homes of American soccer as the fans make their way inside. Freezing temperatures, a little bit of wind, some snow in the air earlier today. Certainly not weather that will intimidate the Americans' opponents tonight. Sweden, another rematch with a perennial contender. A rematch for that matter just a few months ago at the World Cup in France and an excited crowd here today welcoming the World Cup champions out ahead of the first game under new coach Vladko Andonovsky.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing and welcome singer-songwriter Caitlin De La Durante to perform tonight's Star Spangled Banner. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous Fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the Ladies and gentlemen, Caitlin De La One of the longest histories the United States has against any opponent. One of the most challenging opponents they've had as well. Sweden beat them in the quarterfinal of the last Olympics. Worst ever performance for the U.S. at a major tournament. In fact, the last time the U.S. lost a World Cup match that didn't end in penalties, that was to Sweden as well back in 2011. The U.S. prevailing 2-0 this summer at the end of the group stage in France. The big question tonight, what sort of an impact can Vlako Andonovsky have on this team in such a short amount of time? For that answer, we say hello to Alex Curry, who's shivering down on the field. Tonight, this U.S. team begins a new era under Vladko Andonovsky. And when I asked Vladko about his focus with this group, he said even though it's a short camp, it's an opportunity for him to get to know these players individually, start building relationships, and really understand their strengths and their weaknesses. But his main focus is to shift a mentality. He said the most important thing is to reset from the World Cup and now focus on qualifying for the Olympics early next year. And when I talk to a handful of these U.S. players, you can tell that they are re-energized and they are ready for this next challenge. Katja Korolev, 31 years of age from the United States, our referee this evening. She's been an international referee since 2016, was a fourth official at the World Cup, and was also a referee at the Under-17 World Cup last year, as well as a familiar face from NWSL. 60-year-old Peter Gerhardsen took the Sweden job a couple summers ago, taking over for Pia Sundhaga, the former U.S. coach, and in talking to us yesterday, was excited in large part about how big the crowd would be here tonight. They sold this place out, even if it's not full. The highest attendance this year in the Swedish league, where most of these uh, players play, was just over 3,000. So he was excited to get some of these younger, less experienced players an opportunity in a big environment tonight. It is an opportunity for some of these players to show something, Ali, to Vladko Antonovsky. Who are you excited to see? But, I mean, it has to be Casey Short first and foremost. I mean, this is a player that was probably one of the last ones cut, and you you don't know where Vladko Antonovsky's head is in terms of where Crystal Dunn's going to play. So that position could be wide open for Casey Short to sneak on and, and swoop up. I mean, she is the greatest 1v1 defender, we would say, that we have right now in the U.S. And then, of course, Carly Lloyd. I mean, Heather Riley touched on it, but Carly Lloyd, I have not seen her as happy as she was the other day in our meeting with her in pregame about how she could perform under Vlatko Andonovsky, the freedom she feels, and the way that she can check off that back line, hold up play. It's all going to be an evolution for her, but I think she feels excited that she can develop as an experienced player under Vlatko. The U.S. team that is ready to go, a U.S. team that certainly was energized in speaking with them yesterday about this new change as they end out an incredibly successful year against an opponent that they are used to playing at a very high level. So who can make that good first impression? 
And who can try to leave 2019 with a good taste in their mouths? We're underway. The Vladko Andonovsky era for the United States is underway. His team wearing red tonight. It is the Swedes in yellow. For the United States, it is very much about making a good first impression on just the ninth full-time head coach in 35 years of history for this U.S. team. And a early ball trying to spring Tobin Heath for now. She created an own goal in the World Cup off of this 1v1 matchup with this exact type of setup. It's a corner on this one as Anna Anderson was defending her there in the U.S. an early attacking chance. And it's a direct ball out of the back that springs Tobin Heath. If the opportunity is going to be there for the U.S. to get in behind early, they're going to take it. Tobin Heath then sizes up her defender 1v1, tries to clip this in, but can't get past that near post defender. Anderson got a foot on her clipped ball that put it in the back of the net, made it 2-0. In France this summer, Lavelle to the near post off the corner. And it'll be cleared away for the Swedes. The headlines in Sweden coming into this one is the World Cup final that wasn't the hope for a rematch that never was at the World Cup. They fell to the Netherlands in extra time. For that matter, it was the clash that wasn't. As Sweden made five changes to their lineup for the group stage match. And yet in saying that, of the 22 players on the field right now, 17 of them saw the field in France at the World Cup. The 2-0 win for the U.S. And ostensibly put them in the more difficult side of the bracket. And we know how the rest of the story went. So given all that, Allie, what are you interested in looking at here in this one tonight? I'm really curious to see how the U.S. plays out of pressure. I mean, that front four for Sweden is so fast, and Peter Gerhardsen is asking them to be brave, to not get pinned in their back end, and to look to press the United States and win the ball high up on the pitch. So I'm really curious to see how the U.S. manages that in their attempt to be more sophisticated in the way they build out. Looks they're knocking that away. Lavelle. Going to run it Anderson there. Gets a foot. Another U.S. corner. Just a couple hours up the road from her hometown of Cincinnati. One of two Americans on the field. Part of FIFA's best 11. Named this fall. Heath clipping it in. Into that high pressure up the field. We saw the U.S. working on a lot of practice here last night. That is the U.S. play under the pressure. Sauber run for Dahl Kemper. The challenge there of Hurtig. A collision there. And Erickson and Lavelle. That'll be a free kick for Sweden. for them right now of course this could turn around not just to the olympics but for olympic qualifying which was announced earlier today it'll take place down in houston starting at the end of january and Vladko Antonovsky told us yesterday he wasn't entirely sure at first whether he should coach this camp so quickly after his hiring so quickly after the announcement but he said i didn't want my first time with this team to be competitive matches sweden on the other side they already know they're going to the olympics the european olympic qualifying is based on results at the world cup they're in the midst of qualifying for the european championships in the summer of 2021 whereas the u.s will have one more game this year coming up in jacksonville this weekend this is the final game of 2019 for sweden Kuhlberg on the ball. It's her international debut at the age of 28, playing the pass for Anna Gloss. Just trying to recover and couldn't. Pass into the middle now for Sikianti Olma. Some pressuring, but Hurtig able to get around her, and Hurtig now cutting in. Lost her footing and lost the ball. Right now for Mertz. It's 
Horan instead. She's able to get out of the pressure to find short. Early ball, press as Lord in the middle. Here comes the cross, Carter Lord, 1 0. Took a miss five minutes. Not a bad start to the new era under Amnoski. Horan just spins out of pressure, and you can see how high Casey Short is. She's holding the whip. She gets in that half space with Kristen Press, running that channel on the outside. Carly Lloyd do exactly what she should do, being off that back shoulder of the other center back, slides in behind, as that is a perfectly placed ball by Kristen Press. And the easy tap in for Lloyd in the end, but she does the work of getting to the right space. And the smiles continue for that woman there who sees potentially a rebirth under Andonovsky. 119th international goal. What's so interesting about it is since she turned 30, her goals per game rate is more than double. 83 goals in the 50 games since her 30th birthday. We just get better as we get older, right? There's Herzig now. Saw a good recovery off the first touch. for Lloyd. Press gets in behind and Carly Lloyd just stays in that blind shoulder path. And Noski likes it. Well, if you're splitting hairs, it took him twice as long to score against Sweden tonight as it did at the World Cup, but it is still an early goal. Claire Carly Lloyd, we've all been talking about just how thrilled she seemed by all these changes. It is one of the interesting stories going forward. Listen, it is an incredibly wonderful reason. It's the best reason possible for Alex Morgan not to be a part of the team right now. She and her husband, Servando Carrasco, expecting their first child, a baby girl, in April. Congratulations to them and their entire family. So here's Carly Lloyd getting an opportunity to try to make that good first impression on Vlatko Andonovsky and talking to us a bit yesterday about some of the changes that he's expecting from her. Some of the things she's looking to do well here tonight. Is there pressure there on Kuhlberg? Sends it out for a U.S. throw. Oh, the pressure from Sweden. Press for short from Horan. Over the play out of it. Lavelle's making a big run up the middle as Lloyd pops up out wide. Short's continuing her run forward. Here's Casey Short running at Kuhlberg on her international debut. Just poked that away. Third corner for the U.S. in the early running. And the pressure has been there from Sweden, but the U.S. did a nice job in that last attack of solving it. Players being brave on it. And Casey Short talked about two players coming to this match. Casey Short, Carly Lloyd, both of them incredibly active already in the ongoings. Be heat to take it this time for the far flag. And we're back to defend for Sweden. Get a header on frame. That was from Lloyd and comfortable save in the end for Hedvig Lindahl in her 169th international appearance. Carly Lloyd is a big target for the U.S. You can't leave her this open. Free header in the end. Unlike Sweden on set plays. The U.S. women are in action now. The men will be in action starting next week. They got the game with Canada. We'll have the game with Cuba on Tuesday, November the 19th. The match played down in the Cayman Islands as uh, Cuba Stadium in Havana. Not fit for purposes of this match. Coverage beginning at 7 Eastern here in FS1. You can stream it live on the Fox Sports app. Switch there. Really well brought down. Tobin Heath is now on the left. Kristen Press has come to the right. Gliding past one defender. And takes the bump from the second. Didn't get the foul that she or the fans wanted. Saw it able to stop any sort of counterattack, though. Cross 
Messi and it does. Stop away by Salabrin. Well did not. Sigiata Oma getting an attempt away. It's a come to a first involvement tonight for a listener. This one's coverage tonight, sponsored by AT&T. Made two saves officially. In the shot of victory for the U.S. over Sweden in the World Cup group stage. It's for Moran. Options to choose from. It's too far for Lloyd, Kuhlberg, and Lindahl able to clean that up. Fifth different coach that Carly Lloyd has scored a goal for in her international career. Not bad. How many Let's of the see. other four can you figure out here? All right, Pia, Greg, excuse me, Pia Sunwa, Greg Ryan, April Heinrichs, Clocking, and Jones. There you go. I just had to go back chronologically. It wasn't that challenging. I don't want to talk from both sides about the things they want to do differently tonight. What do you pick it up on here after 11 minutes or so? I mean, you're seeing it right there in the shape, the 4-1-4-1 defensive mid-block from the U.S. Sophia Jakobsen now trying to run it short. Jakobsen got a cross away. Sabra in that intercept. Clear to run there for Aslani. She's going to get there. Her ball into the middle. Dangerous attempt. That was Sonnen there with a big tackle right in front as her take. Thought she was going to have a tap in. Danoski up off his seat for that, trying to direct traffic as press carries forward. She's got Sonnet to her outside. It's not going to reach her though as Anderson gets it away. For Horan. That's going to be out past everyone. Well, here's a look at what Sweden just tried to do against the U.S. And Tobin Heath trying to play out of pressure. It's too tight. The giveaway occurs. And then aslani has got two runners in the box. Offs for the second one as this one glides along the six yard box. But Sonnet there with the necessary intervention. She played just eight minutes at the World Cup. That's Started for the last five for the U.S. this fall as Kayla Hare and Allie Krieger, among others, available right now. So she's certainly taking advantage of her opportunity, the Portland Thorns player. Here comes Sweet again. Jakobsen going to return it for Blackstenius. Took the touch on short. She'll get a cross in. That's popped up in the air. And Hare's able to get there in the end again. It was Lena Herzig with an opportunity. Sweet starting to knock on the door for a tying goal. They have a lot of pace up top, and they're getting in behind, and that's one area that Sweden thought that they could take advantage of the U.S. Press them and use their pace to get at their backs. I think close of our Aslani hesitated when you asked her yesterday, what's an area you think you could exploit? She said, our speed versus the U.S. defenders. Skip past Lavelle. Another bit of skill there as she tracks it down. players we talked to yesterday were excited about this. It's a great way to end their year. It was it Uncle Lena Erickson told us? Asana said it was an opportunity for some of these younger, newer players to really step up to a high level, see how they do. And a lot of talk, and hopefully we'll get to see her about Benison, the young 17-year-old from Sweden. A lot of expectations falling off those bad girl's shoulders what she can potentially accomplish for this team. All three players we talked to yesterday wanted to see her get on the field. We're excited to see her get the opportunity because it's you're seeing less 17-year-olds breaking in at that age to the international level than once did. Such a good point. No more Heather O'Reilly's for the U.S. Maybe Mallory Pugh. There's Jakobsen again. They're working on Casey Short a lot of that right side for Sweden. And that's going to be out for a goal kick in the end. And look, that's the strong side for the Swedish team. They like to push on Hanna Glass on that outside. Jakobsen will tuck in. This is the last attack with Jakobsen playing provider to get that ball in behind Casey Short. 
And it's Blackstenius who serves the ball in. But again, two runners are getting in the box for Sweden. I'm sure to an almost a year without appearances for the United States until the late August game against Portugal. She's playing in the fourth of the last five games for the U.S. this fall. Up in the Chicago Red Stars to that appearance in the NWSL final this year. And Lavelle with the skill to get out of traffic. bit about from Vlanko Andonovsky yesterday and some of his players didn't end up in a chance on that one, though. No, but you're exactly right, John. I mean, some of those decisions that players made, I don't think they would have made previously. They would have opted to go vertical quicker. And with Carly Lloyd, as she talked about the timing and the freedom to check out of that pocket as the nine and be a bounce player. I've seen that continues to be a theme tonight. Space. Now Horan didn't have an option upfield. Really could quite find the angle there for Adam Lavelle. And Horan intercepted by Anderson. That's on it there. Just dragging her dig down, knowing she was beat. Just a talking to from Katya Koroleva, the referee. And this is the tendency of her tick. She likes to cut in to the inside. That one touch takes her by Sonnet. Well, Peter Gerhardsen, the Sweden coach, was immediately up, barking at the fourth official that he wanted a yellow it, card for that there. Professional foul should be a yellow. Is that one of those things, if it's a competitive match, it's a yellow card. When it's a friendly, you're less likely to see it. You know, I gave up trying to judge the referees, all right? Christina Uncle texted me right now. Don't worry about it. I know they worked hard, Christina. And look, there's space outside Julia. It's in this 4-1-4-1 set, and you're seeing one of the other mids for Sweden creep up in there when they have their too low. One of them is releasing, getting alongside Aslani. They're just not able to find it right now. I think the channels are tight for the U.S. That's making that entry pass difficult. Slotty there, good recovery there on the pass, which was behind her. Couldn't connect, though, with Black Genius. Given right back, though, to Sweden. Now Slotty on the turn. Jakobsen will pick it out wide. She's got the overlap from Glass now. Short try to recover. And able to recover the good tackle. It's going to be out for a corner. But it's that combination on that far side between Jakobsen and Glass again. Proving challenge for Casey Short. The timing of the overlap was spot on. And Anderson who plays in England for Chelsea. The only start of the World Cup for her was against the U.S. It was her redirection. And an own goal for the second goal. They are getting herself set. In swinger, really no one there in yellow at the back post. Knocks it a chance. The flag will come up though for offside. Alex, what do you hear down there on the U.S. bench? Well, Vladko has been on his feet this whole match talking to his team, telling them to press, drop back, have the back line make the runs. But he's also been very vocal with Sauerbrunn and Sonnet to get open, hold the ball, press, and then once again, get back open. <laughs> well, listen, we, we talked about this some yesterday. He's inheriting an incredible situation, but it's all how much coaching do you do? Do you have to, to a certain extent, just sort of sit back and watch an evaluator, or do you need to assert your personality in your first game? You know, I thought that was the interesting part of our meeting with him, was how much he was already tactically working on. 
you think you'd come in and, like you said, just kind of cruise into the situation and get your bearings. But he came in and immediately knew there were areas that this team could improve upon and needed to improve upon to stay ahead of the game, really. So he'd be able to get through that press. Aslani. Moran for company. And he'll be in behind for second corner in quick succession for Sweden. Lani, who Alexi was talking about, she and Jakobsen playing for the team now known as Tacon in Sweden. Next year is going to be Real Madrid. As they have decided to dip their toe into the women's game. An in swinger now. Came off the back of Herzing. Bouncing out. The U.S. got it clear. Tribute to our nation's veterans, a part of the fabric of who we are here at Fox Sports. We're proud to partner with The Mission Continues, an nonprofit organization deploying military veterans to build strong communities across the nation. You can visit missioncontinues.org to learn more here as we approach Veterans Day. Silver to the run. Lavelle in a pocket of space. She's got Heath out wide as well. Uh, Lavelle just takes the bump there. From Lena Herzig. Lavelle has that pull away speed, but you got to go back and credit Becky Sauerbrunn. She steps up, drives forward, and then plays a penetrative pass. That's one thing that Blocko wants to see out of her is playing forward, and she finds a key playmaker in Lavelle. Going to be Heath standing over it, and then Dahl Kemper talked her out of it. We went back to defend for Sweden. Oh, trying to do something with that as she was backpedaling, short throwing her body in, and that will be a whistle and a foul. Casey Short, one of a handful of players that Gladko Andonovsky told us yesterday are going to be limited minutes wise aware of. The very long season, particularly for players that were involved in that NWSL final. So he's got a couple of planned substitutions in mind just to make sure he's managing the load on some of these players at the end of this year. Lavelle and Heath and Ertz, among the others he mentioned to us yesterday in that regard. So he had a good first touch there. Couldn't find the pass though for Aslani. The right back for Sweden at the World Cup against the U.S. Playing in the center of the park today. Drifted that pass too far. The turn it was for Alyssa Nair. The defining moment, as Alexa talked about in the pregame, the penalty save against England. We were watching that one in Nashville with the American Outlaws and the explosion of noise just in that room. And what that save meant. Clipped over the top for Horan. Not going to find her. It's knocked away by Kuhlberg. We've seen it a couple times now with the attack mids when Carly Lloyd checks because that's going to be more of her strong suit as the nine. You're seeing those runs in behind by Lindsay Horan, by Rose Lavelle. Practice yesterday, playing out between the two center backs and sort of building from there. Lavelle skipping away from Ziggy Oma. And we we'll come back to the near side for Sonnet. There's Tobin Heath. Heath will clip it in. Roy was being held there, she felt.
on it back for Heath. Now in for Press, who made the run, cut back cross, and around there was taking a bump there, couldn't do anything with it. But it's really good patience by the U.S. It was 3v3 for a very long time until Kristen Press comes over and overloads the zone with this run in behind her defender. The space is there, it's well weighted. With the cross behind her in. That's for the opening goal of the World Cup game against Sweden. Off the corner, Heat there stepping in to take it away from Aslani, and then chops her down. us yesterday there really has been a great energy the last couple days but she said you're gonna have that any time yeah. you have a change in your work environment he telling us it's really what happens down the road she was excited for this matchup she told us yesterday a like sweet will wake you up early you're not just gonna show up and play and be able to get away from it great way to sort of begin this era she felt yeah they're in the honeymoon phase but the energy was palpable Right? And you see it tonight, the way they started this match. It has a very different feel than the Victory Tour games we experienced after the World Cup. Although it's the end of the year, it feels like the beginning. We'll take Mr. Footing there. She cut and sawed off that ball. He's wanting to run with this one. It's there sliding in in front of Aslani. Just to prevent the quick break. Jakobsen nowhere to go with that one. Listen, you have a way better baseline than I do. I've been around this team for about three years, but it was obvious yesterday. And so I guess the question is, how do you, if you're Vlatko Andonovsky, keep that going? Is that just wins? Or is there anything else you can do to make sure you keep the positivity going long term? It's relationships. Here's Hurtig quickly going to clip that in behind Sauber and got just enough of a touch and short to clear it. Hey. Yes, you could say uh, this is relative to a women's team, but I think as a female player, as a woman player, the relationship you have with your manager is what keeps things fresh. It keeps you driving forward. And with Andonovsky, he always seems to change things. And whether that's with the system, with the team, individually, he's going to challenge these players. And that's all these players want, is to be hungry for more, to learn more, and to continue to evolve. Otherwise, it gets stale. We've heard that from players, including Heather O'Reilly, who uh, played for his club teams, FC Kansas City. And Rain FC about the relationships he builds. It's going to be a chance now for Press on the ball from Lloyd. She's got Lavelle across the middle. Press cutting it back herself. And it's in for a goal. 50th international goal for Christian Press. The 12th American to reach that milestone. This goal is so good, and it starts with the defensive setup. They're in their 4 1 4 1. Tobini pinches back in and wins the ball that they're trying to play to one of their attacking mids. And then the break is on, and Kristen Press is adios to two defenders and finds the back of the net herself. But the system, the way this U.S. team is setting up defensively, Sweden is not figuring out how to break it down. And then the U.S., we know how good they are on the counter. Kristen Press makes a meal of this one. Goes to her left, gets the little touch off Lindahl, but it still tucks its way into the back net. So good. And I think Sweden was not anticipating coming out facing one player pressing them, and that's in Carly Lloyd, and having four players sit in that midfield line with Ertz shepherding in front of the backs. That has been a big year for Kristen Press. She and Dahl Kemper are the only two to have played in every game this year for the U.S. He reaches the... 50 goal milestone earlier in this game her team high 11th assist of the year and the u.s now in a comfortable position just shy of a half hour i'm really controlling things I mean, the space is there outside Julia. and Sweden just cannot find that entry pass into those two players. It's all very pre predictable and labored. It's on the ball for Heath. Moran has Son advancing up the right. She was drifting offside, so Haran didn't play the pass. 
And so far, so good. The opening half hour of the Vlatko Andonovsky era for the United States. And there might be a third coming as Lloyd gets on the end of the clip. Tanner, oh, what a goal that is. What a finish by Carly Lloyd. 3-0 United States. Making it look easy. Tobin Heath takes a beating on this one. That one goes over the top. And then Carly Lloyd, so aware. She knows Lindahl's off her line. Right there, just sniffing in behind the center back. Takes a really good touch, even though she's fading away from goal. Flips it up and over Lindahl. And that's something. Two goals and an assist in 31 minutes tonight for Carly Lloyd, who you told us before kickoff was a player that could stand to make a strong first impression. Safe to say she's done so. It's only taken 30 minutes. Looks at running the other way here, short able to recover. Covers from this. They were excited for this game. They seem confident, even aware of the fact of some of the younger, newer players they were trying to bring in. Lock to get in the cross away. Max Genius couldn't do anything with it. The best chance to score early on off a cross was stabbed away by Emily Sonnet just in front of Hertzig. On the end of that switch, but Ertz picks it back up. So that's all that. Aslani intercepted by Sauerbrunn. You can feel the pace quickening up a bit now after sort of a slower beginning to the game. I mean, given all that, I mean, this is Sweden. This isn't some scrub team. Are you surprised at 3-0 in 32 minutes? Yes, I am. But I think when you come in as invigorated as these players were and on a cool and crisp night like tonight and you know that you're winding down the year, you're energized and you're seeing this U.S. team, and when they're on point and sharp and crisp, we know what they can produce. Having said that, I do think that this system and the, the way that the U.S. is setting up defensively, it's causing problems for Sweden. This is a team that likes to play on the break. This is a team that likes open space, and the U.S. is not giving them that in this mid-block. For Chris, now the second chance at that one. As well to spin away from the defender. Trying to measure that pass in for Lloyd. Had intercepted. Kluberg making the play. So if you're Sweden, how do you adjust here and stop the bleeding? Is it a matter of stopping the bleeding or is it a matter of how do we prepare ourselves for the Euros? And for the Olympics, you know, I think with this group, it's going to be about trying to push on and and get their team to a tactical place that Peter wants to see out of them. That's playing positively. That's on interceptions, playing forward and not always playing sideways and backwards. That's pressing high up in the field. I think they're going to want to work on those things as opposed to be concerned with the scoreline at this point. Slani now and Herzig running off. We're going to try to find the angle for the pass. Tom Kemper there to intercept. And there had to react quick to get rid of it. First three qualifiers for the European Championship. So got a block to that cross. As have Iceland. They'll play Iceland next year, right at the end of the qualifying process. The European Championships in the summer of 2021. So trying to find someone to throw it into. Herzog just miscontrols it out. And here's some of the nasty from Carly Lloyd. Just sneaking in front of her center back and then chipping that one over Lindahl, who's way off her line, thinking that ball's going to be played first time in behind. Two goals and an assist tonight for Carly Lloyd, up to 120 international goals. 
in her career. Sal Brun does here, just getting rid of that one under some pressure. <laughs> the square ball across the top of the 18. I don't know if that's what we're talking about in building out, but they didn't get punished. Rule room for Jakobsen. And it breaks down there as the pass was behind Gloss making the run forward. Gerhardt's and the Swedish coach talked to us about yesterday. We want to be aggressive defensively. We want to be brave with the ball. But for some of his players, you know, less of the defending counter mindset, but it's not what he would have been hoping for so far. Rosani steps in and gets caught there by Horan. And to be fair, Sweden doesn't have their full complement of players. He's going to get a yellow card for that, looks like. some point. Well, here's the challenge by Haran. No ball. And then swipes into the ankle of Aslani. Kick taken too quickly. To poor Levis liking. You mentioned Nilas Fischer. Part of the FIFA Best 11 center back. She's one of three center backs in fact, Sweden are without tonight. We had heard from some of the Swedish journalists yesterday, Aslani was a bit banged up coming into the game. They weren't sure if she was going to go tonight. She definitely felt that tackle from her end. As you mentioned earlier, temperature right around freezing and dropping. Not as much wind as we were expecting this evening, which is a good thing. Aslani now sending it in, short sending it away. Comes to nothing in the end for Sweden. She's still not over 100% there. Aslani after taking that tackle. And what's this guy thinking right now? Thank you. Trying to battle her way through. She's able to come out of that with the ball. Methodically up the middle here, through the middle. It'll be short on the outside. Moran has press outside of her. Short now drifting inside. Lloyd making the run, sending out a hat trick now, but alert to that was Lindahl to get there in time. Big Lindahl, the age of 36, coming off her fourth World Cup. We asked her yesterday, how much longer do you think you're able to keep playing? She said, well, how long does my body keep hurting in the morning? And how much is it hurting each morning as I'm getting up? She certainly was, it was yesterday about how the Swedish team exceeded the outside expectation. In the World Cup semifinal, she said, we didn't exceed our internal expectation. We want to win this thing. And so they're excited about the Olympics coming up. Next year, what they can do there, that's a foul in the middle. And just the fact that they haven't won a world championship and that expectation, you know, she said Pia Sundog was the one who told us and taught us that we can beat anyone on any given day, including the U.S. And now Peter's the one that's changing their tactics. Uber, bad giveaway to Kristen Press. Lloyd to her right, Lavelle's the trailer. Press wanting this one herself. Comfortable save for Lindahl.
weren't able to guide that for Horan. We're seeing a lot of that from the U.S. When they're pinned in the flanks, those players are spinning out and they're trying to change it. running the other way. Genius in front of her, gonna get it now. Sauber trying to close the angle. Clipped into the middle, no one there though. Except for Alyssa Nair. She'll go quick. There's some space here for Lavelle to operate in. That's solid up to her right. Press making a run to her left. Lavelle drew three defenders around him before getting rid of it to Sonic. And Ruth will drive that out. You could see the minute that ball was coming back to her, she was shape shaping herself up to send that thing into someone. It was either going to be a beauty or that. Another bad giveaway by Sweden. Press picking it up. Lavelle wants it. Horan to her left instead. Cut off there. It's good recovery by Gloss in the end. And Horan a bit slow to get up behind the plate. Slotty. That ball in play. Couldn't find a teammate, though. Oh, no. Coming up on our at and halftime report, Sarah, Alexi, and Heather. We'll return to the field from whatever warm shelter they found during the first half and give us their thoughts on what we've seen so far as it's a bit slow to get up after taking that foul. We'll add a more on our halftime sponsored by AT&T. So we were told her husband Zach was going to be here at the game tonight. We need to fix that headband at halftime. Picks it up. The final few minutes of the first half has gone just about perfectly for the United States. In the first game under Vlatko Andonovsky. Six minutes in. Two more that fall in pretty quick succession around the half hour mark. Lloyd with two of them, including a phenomenal chip. Over Hedvig Lindahl, and she wins that free kick. As we said, as ever in these friendlies, you're expecting substitutions, but particularly the number of players who are coming off a very long year. And it's just a good opportunity to see players for Vlaco, especially against a quality opponent. He's standing over it. The end of the traffic and the header for Horan is right to Lindahl, her third save of this half. Trying to go quick. Black genius and Paul Kemper was there to make easy work of it. Ertz again takes a hard bump there. And they're going to call the trainers out immediately. It was Julia Zikiyotu Olma. He's going to get a yellow card for it. Well, it's on the putback ball that Julia Ertz has no idea. Zikiyotu Olma is right behind her and going to collapse right there. And a hush over Montfer Stadium as Julie Ertz is down. And you see Kosovari Aslani wearing the armband trying to rally the troops for Sweden right now. Ertz is being helped to her feet. That's a good sign. Here's the other American on the field along with Lavelle named to FIFA's best 11 this year. No way, she's going to come right back out, Julie Ertz. Of course. Play with the unique distinction of having played in two World Cup finals in two different positions with two different last names. We'll see how much time is added here at the end. I mean, listen, if you're Vladko Andonovsky, could this have gone any better as Lavelle 
couldn't find the target there. Is there anything you'd be wanting to see better or different from how this first half has gone? You know, I think in the way they're building, it's been patient, but I think there have been some poor decisions out of the back, but that's to be expected. Ultimately, no. I mean, you're getting the press when you want it. You're getting the nine play by Carly Lloyd bouncing off that back line, and then the players are not forcing it down in these wide areas. I think there's been really good patience in their build, and you've pointed that out a few times, John. And then, of course, the goals. You got to win. Final 30 seconds here on the watch of referee Katya Koroleva. did just come out for a throw. Aslani off the throw. Ertz running with her. Aslani bouncing off the one tackle. Down and in for Brasinius. It's behind Hertig though. Bridge down for Sweden. With her head up, just didn't have any options at field. That should just about be the end of the half. We'll see, though, as Aslani pokes it away from Sonic. a halftime whistle. So far, so good for the beginning of the Vlatko Andonovsky era. Marley Lloyd, two goals and one assist. Christian Press scoring the other goal. And it is 3-0 for the United States at the break. Here against the number five team in FIFA's world rankings, Sweden. Let's hear from Carter Lloyd. She's live on the field right now with Alex Curry. Carly, you guys are up by three at half against a tough opponent in Sweden. What has this team done well so far tonight? You know, I think we're really fluid. We're, we're moving uh, for each other. Uh, midfield's doing a great job um, keeping the ball. Backline's doing a great job of feeding kind of those balls in between the lines. And, um, yeah, us up top, we're, we're trying to be dangerous. And I think overall we're, we're definitely implementing some of the, the philosophy that Black is wanting. And, um, you know, it's little by little we're going to keep getting better. Thank you, Carly. Thank you. Two goals tonight, 120 for her career, and this one was an absolute gem. Sarah, Alexi, and Heather on the other side. 45 minutes down, 45 to go here in Columbus, United States 3, Sweden nil. All state, you're in good hands. And then I'm going to do the second one. Yep. This halftime show is sponsored by AT&T, and we say welcome back into... Maffrey Stadium here in Columbus. Alexi Lawless, Heather O'Reilly, Sarah Walsh with you on a frigid night, but the Americans have been on fire. Let's take a look at these highlights and how this unfolded. It didn't take very long for the Americans to get on board. Look, Carly Lloyd is on fire. She is loving it. We said she has a big uh, smile uh, right now, and why shouldn't she? She is getting fed. Wonderful ball. Casey Shaw wins the ball off the press into the middle right there. Thank you very much. Feeling it. There's that smile. See, look. She smells an opportunity, she senses something, and she is a goal scorer, and she will put herself in position to score as she did. Yes! New coach loving it. He's making it look easy, and the scoring would continue 28th minute. Again, the Americans back at it. That's Tobin feeding the ball up again, this time to Kristen Press. Absolute dream start for the USA, and here you have Kristen Press in an individual effort. Well done, takes it on her left. For a Swedish team that considers themselves a real contender for this Olympics, uh, you can't get beat like that in your 18. They came out with intensity, they came out with energy, and none more so than Carly Lloyd. You know what you need more of in your life? Carly Lloyd. <laughs> Give me some more Carly Lloyd. All right. Beat you? No, I'm not going to beat you. I'm just going to turn and I'm going to chip this. Look at this wonderful little turn here and the touch. Oh, it's beautiful. In the back of the net. There's that smile again. So the U.S. goes into the break with a three-zip lead. Vladko could not have scripted this any better, Heather. I think he must be thrilled. I think that the team is doing what uh, he would want. They're winning the ball high up the pitch. They're getting Rose Lavelle and Lindsey Horan really involved in, in setting the play. And they're finishing their chances. I think that he has to be, obviously, relieved the way that his first game has gone, but uh, really excited for his future. Look, he was, as we said, given the keys to this Ferrari. Evidently, it doesn't matter who's driving <laughs> it. This thing is going to drive. Now, that's, that's not quite fair because I think for his first game, this is important. Do they look like a completely different team? No. 
But ultimately, this is a team that wins. This is a team that's scoring. This is a team that's creating chances. This is a team that looks like it's having fun. So far, so good. Still early days. <laughs> we talked so much in the pregame about Carly Lloyd being re-energized. When we just saw her run into the tunnel, no one had a bigger smile on their face. And can you blame her? A couple of goals and assists already. Uh, we will be back here right after the break to get you set. Bundle up. It's going to be a great second half from Columbus. Well, the U.S. women have delivered tonight. The men know they are going to have to later this month. Greg Berhalter's side involved in the CONCACAF Nations League. They're going to host Canada on November 15th, followed by a clash with Cuba four days later. The Cuba match, which takes place in the Cayman Islands, will be live on MS1. Big game, big game against Canada. Yes, we've come to the point for the U.S. men's national team where a home game against Canada uh, is being viewed as a referendum on the team and the coach. But Greg Berhalter put all his chips in on this Canada game. Anything less than a win will not suffice. It'll be very, very interesting to see what happens. All eyes on the U.S. men against Canada. That's coming up on November 15th. But for tonight, all eyes have been on Carly Lloyd and that man right there, Vladko Andonovsky. His first game as the new coach of this team. And man, they're looking good so far. John Strong, Allie Wagner, back after this. Half this one's coverage tonight here in Columbus, sponsored by Volkswagen, the presenting partner of U.S. Soccer. 3-0 for the United States over Sweden at the break in the first game of the Vladko Andonovsky era. And the first two subs of the Vladko Andonovsky era, Andy Sullivan is replacing Julie Ertz again. That was something that was planned coming into this game. Sullivan, it is last month later first game this year for the u.s and a big return for lynn williams part of the title winning north carolina courage at nwsl it's her first appearance for her country in a year and a half march of 2018 the she believes cup the last time 26 year old from fresno saw the field for the u.s new coach new era huge opportunity for all these players alley to show Vladko andonovsky what they can do yeah and also a reward for their performance in the nwsl season i mean andy sullivan had a great season and Lynn Williams made this roster over McDonald. Second half underway. Three goals in that first half for the United States. Two of them from Carter Lowe, another from Kristen Press. USA she was the other player subbed off here at the break. Their first chance we'll see how the U.S. can finish out this second half from a commanding position. No changes so far for Sweden tonight. Sonnet trying to catch up to that ball. Really a touch out wide. Williams was blocked off there by Anna Anderson as she was trying to get involved for the first time tonight. And so what do you want to see from these players here in the second half? Just come on. From the U.S. John from the U.S. And specifically, you know, I think, of course, more of the same, but I think more patience will benefit them. They're trying to work their way into methodical buildup. So the more they default into that and be comfortable playing out of pressure, the better this team is going to get over the long haul. But I think just stay the course right now. It's Jakobsen now. Cutting inside of short is trying to recover. And the angle, Black's genius flag's going to come up here for offside. She drifted in behind. And from Sweden, I want to see some changes. I want to see Benison get in the match. I like Kulashi. Well, let's go down to Alex. What did Vlako Andonovsky have to say coming out for the second half? Well, Vlako said in the first half they did a good job controlling Sweden when they were on defense, but they have to be more aggressive in the middle block. He felt like they were sitting in the middle for too long, and with their energy, they could be doing more, and they could be more aggressive. There's again cut off on the long switch. Andy Sullivan there, Mariana Anderson. And I guess one of the big questions, we were debating this a lot yesterday. Do you just go with Vlatko? Do you just say the first name all the time? Has it become one of those things? When it's this cold out, I'm going with Vlatko. I cannot say Hedinovsky. As he said it was yesterday, when I asked, you know, how do you make this your team, Vlatko's team? Because if we win, it'll be Vlatko's yeah. team. If we lose, I don't know. But it's again. So far, it's his. Good duel on the outside there with Honest and thought she had it taken away. The last coach to lose their first game in charge of the U.S. team was actually April Heinrichs back in 2000. There's been a good, consistent 
series of results. Jill Ellis, of course, had three first games, including her two interim stints. The ball slid in there for Glasgow, sliding over by Sauerbrunn there. And it's going to be out for a Sweden corner. He did bring one staff member with him, Milan Ivanovic, a teammate of his in, in the Indoor Soccer League, MISL. Zagadovsky at one time was the league's defender of the year with the Kansas City Comets, and he spent those two coaching together in their time at NWSL. Anderson, the left back will swing in this corner to the traffic. Sauber is up for it, we'll do it again. And that's a good ball. That's where Sweden wants to drop it in. They usually crowd the six and aim for that near post. But a lot of traffic in front of Nair. Again, trying to put it right on top of her there. Oh, that was the ball that was Nair rattling the frame of the goal there as she went up to knock that away. Anderson going for an Olympico goal. And she'll clip in another dangerous cross in towards Blackstein. Just popped in the air, and Nair's going to come collect. Only going to go quick now for Williams. Sullivan trying to switch it out for Heath and couldn't get it all the way out there. Good idea, though, by Sullivan. Pretty good challenging Glenn's genius in the air. Sullivan will pick up the loose ball. To get a touch to that one short trying to close on Sikiati Olma. It's going to be a free kick for the U.S. that Paul Kemper takes quickly. Lavelle Lloyd wants it through. Still Lavelle driving her way around. That's the second Swedish defender. Now looking to cut it in on the turn. Haran lost her footing. Right at Lindahl in the end. Fourth save for her tonight. Haran gets a shot off, but how good is Lavelle and how she glides through the lines. She is one of the players that Blocko wants to get on the ball more often than not. And look, I don't know that that happened in the Ellis era. I don't know they targeted certain players to have more touches than others, and I think Lavelle is someone that Blocko is going to look to highlight in this system. We heard that from the players we talked to yesterday. They've really felt that for Mandanowski so far. The relationship with the midfielders, so much emphasis on that playing through the midfielders. Williams couldn't get on the end of that pass from Lloyd. And just their angles off of each other. You watch how they're moving off of one another. And sometimes you're finding Lavelle on the same side as Haran. He wants them in close proximity to one another. Checking the video clips of the tablet there. Drew Williams got inside. Floyd rather the cross. Took a redirection in behind. Sullivan on that fly. It's a one in the end. It really is a fascinating journey this man has taken. 43 years of age, Vlatko Andonovsky, born in what was then Yugoslavia, what we now call North Macedonia. Played in the Macedonian League professionally for a time. Came to the U.S. in 2000 and he was playing professional indoor soccer. Had his best spells with the Kansas City Comets before becoming a coach in the first year of NWSL in Kansas City. And then with Rain FC the last couple of years, Lavelle again driving on, again cutting back, again looking for space. Lost her angle now. And we'll win a 
corner out of it in the end. And that's one of the reasons she plays on the right side of that midfield. It's so she can cut in on her left. This one just takes her too far outside the frame of the goal. And she has a really difficult angle, but still wins her team a corner kick. The heat to take. Look at near post and nothing there. How do you send a near post without Ertz on the pitch? You just can't. It's amazing things you you know is coming, know. and yet no one in the world seems to be able to stop it. You can't. It was like the early goal for the U.S. in the World Cup. Short there, crowded off it by Ziggy Atoma. Here comes the press from the U.S. Hook was involved. Horan trying to get away from the traffic. Couldn't quite do so. Right, out for a Sweden throw. about you know the pressure the responsibility of being the coach of the United States and he said I understand every game everyone expects you to win and they expect you to win in a certain style and he said I know that I knew that when I was taking this job good work on the outside there and Williams it breaks down as the cross took a redirection away from Lloyd he said I wouldn't have taken this job if I didn't think that I could do that interception there on the far side by Sonic heard from four players just how personable he is, the personal relationships you talked about in the first half that he builds, his attention to detail. We saw that yesterday in practice, stopping practice, talking with Rose Lavelle about very minute things, how right. she's turning on a particular shoulder, how many touches. Two steps this way. We heard that from multiple players take two steps this way and how that changes everything. And a lot of it was just connection defensively between the midfielders. As ever, how do you translate the things you might do as a club coach to the international game. Let's take a look back at this for Williams. You know, football is football, and if you can dice someone up on the end like Lynn Williams does there, you can talk tactics all you want. When you've got that 1v1 mentality and ability, the U.S. always has something special to throw at you. There's no native who's been a star now for North Carolina Courage, winning multiple trophies with them. It's clipped over the top, flight staying down, LaFell. Surveying her options from a narrow angle, she went for it herself, and Lindahl got a right paw on it to keep her out. And why not by Lavelle? She's had a lot of touches in the early goings of this second half. Lloyd has checked off that back line. Lavelle gets running in behind, and now she's got space to get her head up. Once again, still looking a bit deeper in there. It's only as far as Dahl Kemper was knocked down. It's not trying to begin the break. And Sonic's there to cut it off. Andonovsky talked about transferring to the international game, the things that he does as a club coach. He said, I get it. You don't have a full 25 games and a full season and work your players every day. But he said, I've kept on some of the staff that Jill Ellis had deliberately for that purpose. I'm familiar with these players. Talked about games he would coach at NWSL where he said, boy, I wish I had her on my team. He says, now I have all of them on my team. And now it's going to be about managing all of them. That's one of the biggest challenges of this U.S. team. And it's the honeymoon phase right now. But as you get closer to the Olympics, assuming they qualify, that's when it's going to get more difficult. Two teams out of eight will qualify from Concord Calf, and that tournament will begin at the end of January. Works down there off the foot of Haslani. Well, she got tested out or not. It finds Lloyd Williams on the far side. Hasn't scored a goal for the U.S. since 2017. She's going to wait for this crossfield switch. Williams crossing the deck. He saved again by Lindahl. Sixth stop of the night for her. An incredible work from Tobin Heath. She's the one who initiates this play and then springs into the attack to get just on the outside of the six and end this action that Lynn Williams began. Heath with the assist on Lloyd's second goal tonight. Williams able to clip across in just too far for Horan who got turned around there by Jakobsen.
pressure there by the U.S. forces the giveaway. Heath picks it up. And one, two there with their Port of Thorns teammate, Lindsey Horan. Sullivan picks it up. She'll play for Sonic. Lavelle opening up on the far side. The return, Sonic on the run. Clipping across out of the middle and played in behind there. Linda Erickson playing safe in front of Lindahl out for a U.S. corner, fifth of the night. Innovation on the far side, that's the Nordeca, that's the supporter section for Columbus Crew Games here at Moffer Stadium. This ball is swung in and out of the way by Kuhlberg. Singer's working hard there to keep it. Aslani running with her. Come to the near side. For Sophia Jakobsen working on Casey Short. Jakobsen short goes to ground. Able to cut it back for Glass who couldn't control it cleanly. She tried to stop the attack with a foul. Oh, no advantage play there by the referee. And guess who's there again? It's Tobin Heath. Her work rate has been fantastic tonight. But this is the one with Casey Short going against Jakobsen, and there's Tobin Heath defending in her own 18-yard box, winning that ball and trying to send the U.S. on the break. As we approach the hour mark, Mallory Hugh is preparing to come on as the third sub of the night for the U.S. That was another one that he had the Nosky talked to us about yesterday, trying to cobble together 90 minutes between Pugh and Heath. The long season, great first touch by Tobin Heath. She's not going to let Carly Lloyd pick that ball back up. Williams making a run. It was meant for her. It was blocked by Bjorn. So a chance for the U.S. in this possession. Here's Carly Lloyd. Two goals already and an assist. And we'll clip it in. Stabbed away by Erickson. And it will be Tobin Heath coming off for Pugh at the next opportunity. An hour gone here in Columbus. Vlako Andonovsky's first game in charge of the United States. They built a 3-0 lead in the first half hour of this one. Lavelle accelerating past Bjorn. Rose Lavelle, Rose Lavelle. Comfortable save. Number seven tonight by Hedvig Lindahl. There's a relentlessness from the U.S. right now that Lindahl playing out quick gave the ball back away. And they've got Sweden pinned in. But here's the lovely touch by Tobin Heath. Right around Gloss. Then Carly Lloyd continues her run wide. He's not as done at an assist on the USA's third goal tonight. And now Pew. Another player that is looking to make a good first impression after not seeing the field in the knockout round at the World Cup. Great ovation for the Cincinnati native, Rose Lavelle, who will come off to be replaced by Sam Mewis. Really positive performances from both Heath and Lavelle. And we will see a debut for the 17-year-old Hanna Benison of Sweden. She is ready to come on. As the U.S. off the free kick will work at one here for Pugh, her first touch of the night. They take a throw short. Second attempt to get a cross in. They'll be out for a corner. Substitutions in the wings right now. We're taking short. You're back for Sauerbrunn. To the far side for Sonnet. Get herself back onside and did so. And another corner all the way. 
a hold on to these subs while they're defending the set pieces. who will be coming off here for Sweden. It's ball in this time, skipping across, short was close to it. Pugh picks it up, she'll send it back in the middle and it's up over the bar. So a very cool moment here, 17 year, and she just turned 17 last month as well. She's a young 17 year old for that matter, Hanna Benazon. Starter this year in the Swedish league as Rosengard won a title. Jack scored the key goal that all but clinched the title for them with about a month to go in the season. She started playing with them as a 15-year-old. Earlier this year was with the U23s. Played against Making the U.S. for that matter. Change. But boy, the journalists we talked to, the players we talked to, they are all excited to see her tonight. Now. They are, and the players said, look, we haven't seen much of her yet, but it says a lot for Peter to bring her into this environment because she could be playing with the youth team, but he's giving her that ascension to this level. Making their second change, Sweden substitution. Lorenzo Colossi, 20 years of age, just her sixth international appearance. Turned to the team in October after not being a part of the World Cup. by number 20, I think Gerhardt's and Erdman. Those are the two players I want to see, and Janogi. Those on, for that matter. Peter Gerhardt's and the Sweden coach told us yesterday she was actually in contention to be part of the World Cup squad this year at the age of 16 at the time. This week starts Saturday strong with the big noon Saturday game of the week. Maryland taking on Justin Fields and number one Ohio State on Fox and the Fox Sports app. As that cross is going to come all the way through there. We are legally required to mention Ohio State football at least once while we're in Columbus for these games. So we see it off in these games out. And the subs start to come in. The rhythm sort of goes out. What do you want to keep seeing here? There you go. That being here, right? What do you want to keep seeing here from the U.S. even as the changes start coming in to finish this game out? Well, I'm really curious to see how Pew does on the wing. I mean, she's one of the players that I've talked about could potentially benefit from this coaching change. Rocco providing perhaps more of that methodical structure in the buildup, getting more players around her so she can combine and get herself in free space ultimately because that's when she can do damage and get her confidence back up. Still just the age of 21. Quickly Lloyd pass one defender, takes the bump from the second, trying to cut it into a dangerous area in the middle. Williams is close to it. It's going to be out for a corner. The run from deep from Carly Lloyd offsets the Swedish defense and then she cuts the recovering defender. It's been a tough day for from Kuhlberg from Sweden. U.S. can't get the finishing touch. Sullivan to take the corner now. In the middle there, no one there, but awkwardly dealt with by the Swedish defense. Pew gonna hold it in, couldn't do so. Kulashi just on the field. was hounded to get this ball back. It was Williams there with the touch, and that was actually last off of Kulashi, out for a U.S. throw. And showing off that speed. It was that speed that almost actually kept her from being a part of things at Pepperdine. That was where she played college soccer. Every time the Pepperdine coaches came to scout her, she was away with the track team. And they didn't get to see her until very late in the process and basically had to take a chance on her. The story told of a practice session without field lights that they had to basically set up temporary lights and the coaching staff sat on the back of the truck to try to see her because they had heard about her. And she was the first player ever given a full ride at Pepperdine, has played her whole career now with it was then Western New York, now North Carolina Courage, and getting a second opportunity with the United States. And Vladko Andonovsky, more than a year and a half after her last game for her national team. And one of the great stories of what the NWSL can produce player that would have just continued on and never seen the light of day with this U.S. team had it not been for that league. Next team is trying to hold that up. Pressure from Sullivan. Clean tackle, says the referee. Mewis comes away with it. Williams on a dead sprint to her right. Instead, looking to go left for Pew. Now 
Boggs, what are you hearing down there from the U.S. bench? Well, Vlaco has really been directing each play from the bench. He's telling Mallory Pugh to press before Casey Short receives the ball. He's telling her to take two steps wide, then look inside. And he's pulled almost every midfielder aside to give them a little tip. And he told Sam Hughes before she went in to create some space. Two steps. That's going to become the thing <laughs> with Vlaco and Donofsky. You better have a good dance move if that's going to be his thing. It's a good dance move by Miranda. We saw Andy Sullivan at one point coming over getting instructions on a dead ball situation. Again, good footwork by Horan. Mewis knocked away by Kuhlberg. Lloyd's pressure forces an errant pass. Saw it now. We'll hand back to Horan. Going to clip that in. Lloyd sitting on a hat trick but couldn't get on the end of it. Well, here's the footwork from Horan. Just dices up the young 17-year-old Benison. The great Horan, as she's known in my hometown yes. of Portland. Williams intercepting that pass out of the back. Quickly in for Pew. Good recovery by Kuhlberg there. Played back into a dangerous area there by the Swedish defense. Pew couldn't do anything with it, though. A long run forward before handing it off to Jakobsen. Kulashi intercepted by Short. Two more subs are in the wings for Sweden right now. Lewis. Short for Lloyd. Williams is in the middle. Pugh has it wide. Pugh running it on Gloss. He blocks the cross off for yet another U.S. corner. <laughs> 20 minutes to go. A busy night for Hedvig Lindahl. Seven saves that she's made. Three goals that she has conceded. Andy Sullivan standing over. Another U.S. corner. It's a good area. Lloyd throwing her body in late. Stand the way there. Uh, Bjorn. Fans certainly love the attempt there. In the end, it comes to nothing there from Sonnet. She'll scream with the referee about it. My college coach always said, don't go through the legs. The other player's got the body position on you, can body you off the ball. Jakobsen does just that, wins possession back. So Black's genius, her night is done. Making their fourth change, Sweden substitution. Anna Onvegor, 22-year-old, just burst onto the scene last couple years in the Swedish league. She actually moved mid-season to Rosengård, scored nine goals in nine games as they won the title. 14 goals this year. It's the most in the Swedish change. league. And Sweden struggled to get off the bench in the World Cup. And also going to get Julia Carlinas, 26 year old, making just her fourth international appearance, was not a part of the World Cup squad. And with Envergaard coming in, she's not as pacey as Baxenius up top. She's a better combination player. And I think her, with Kulashi underneath, that's something that Sweden can look to try to utilize as an outlet. Because right now, the U.S. has had Sweden pinned in. They can't even advance past halfway. Thank you. on the run. Williams trying on the end of it. And that last play by Sam Hughes is going to be the evolution, I think, of her as a player. She's so good. You saw how strong she's botting off players trying to make a challenge, but then it's slowing down and putting some texture on that final ball. 
goes for Jakobsen now. Air cross off the knee of Sauerbrunn out for a corner. Listen not as busy as her counterpart. Just one save that she has had to make tonight. This is outshot Sweden 13 to 4. 10 of those 13 on target. We've seen this earlier in this half where they try to drop this ball right on top of her and all the traffic and Anderson to take it. And slammed into her left post trying to keep it out on the last one. And looking for the same thing. Short there with a touch. And it's going to be out for another corner. Korolava, the referee, is just going to try to manage some of this. Just a bit further out, Lloyd got a header. Short there a touch. Back right it goes to Anderson. Half-hearted appeals for a handball there as that cross was blocked. Sweet does well to keep it in the end as the U.S. is looking to break out. It's clipped in here now. Rolled back in front, and there's a the goal. It was Bjorn on the cutback, and it's Avogard who's celebrating the goal there. Been scoring tons of goals in the Swedish league, and with 15 minutes to go, the Swedes are on the board here in Columbus. <laughs> and it looked a little haphazard initially. Here's the poor clearance by the U.S. They can't clear their end. And it's that touch right there. Coming back into Benison. The vision of the 17-year-old and the texture of that final ball is something special. An immediate impact. Bjorn gets around the edge. And then you've got two runners from Sweden converging at that near post. And it's Envegaard who gets the tap in. But that is something special. Got some momentum here. See if they can do anything with it. That pass was too far for Jakobsen. Salvador with actually there pressure and gets it away for Sonnet. And this was one-way traffic for most of it, but see if that goal changes anything or not. It's moving through the pass for Pew to chase and alert Lindahl there up off the line to come get it. Sauber rising up there from on the guard. U.S. just continues to pick off possession from Sweden and those entry balls that they're trying to slice through the center of the park. Oh boy, draw the foul there. For Bjorn. Oh, here's the last look at the special touch by the young 17-year-old Benison in behind to Bjorn. And Alyssa Nair has to cover that near post. Sweden knows it. Glancing touch back across her. Just her second international goal for Andregard for all the goals that she scored in the Swedish League. Second and 14 internationally. Last was a year ago. Is sponsored by Allstate. You're in good hands with Allstate. Just trying to 
and close out a victory on the opening night of the Vodko Andonovsky era. Lloyd, two goals and an assist. Kristen Press got the other. They brought the subs in. Here's the second half has gone along on a cold, cold, below freezing night here in Columbus, Ohio. Credit to the fans here that did come and did stick it out. You see Anna Hanvegard there he scored that goal a few minutes ago. And a shutout bid for Melissa Nair tonight. Something caused some more trouble. Short was pitching up there, and that ball came up over the top, and now Sauber and Nair not on the same page. It's an empty net. It's a second goal. Anvegard there as Jakobsen played the ball inside. And all that good work from the U.S. at the back tonight, undone in pretty quick succession, and all of a sudden, it's a one-goal game. And one of the few times they've tried to play a ball in behind into a wider area. This ball's laced by Bjorn in, and then Nair off her line. The poor communication between her and Sauerbrunn. She's trying to just shepherd that ball back to her goalkeeper, body off her player, but Jakobsen gets that touch on it. And then Nair way out of position, and Envegaard with a cool finish because there was still a defender to beat. So one goal in 13 international appearances for the 22-year-old Envegaard, and she's got two in about five minutes here. Coming on as a sub, and how does the U.S. react to this? Sabrin taking the space forward. Lloyd. Going to roll that in. Long run for Horan. Not going to get there. Jackson cleaning that up with Lindahl. Well, that's how you react. Becky Sauerbrunn taking a positive touch, playing a positive pass. Carly Lloyd checking off that back line. Horan got herself back on side. Going to play to the space for Williams to chase. She's going to get there. Lynn Williams. Pugh's making the first run. Cut back into the middle. No one there. Except for Benazon. Short stepping forward to pick off the pass. Jakobsen goes to ground. Short went down as well. It's going to be a penalty. And it really hasn't been a game that has been about the left side of the U.S., the right side of Sweden. This time, Casey Short gets the better of Jakobsen. No VAR on this one. <laughs> no VAR. Credit to Short for making the play. Jakobsen going to ground there. And it will be Carly Lloyd who will attempt to seal her hat trick tonight. Two first half goals, including a gem of a chip over Hedvig Lindahl. And Lloyd an opportunity from the spot to grab her third of the night. And she puts it up over the bar. Did not see that coming. Well, here's a look at the foul on Casey Short. Jakobsen trying to recover, and I think Casey Short trips herself up before Jakobsen even gets there. And then Lloyd blows that one over the top. So frustrated Carly Lloyd after that one. Two more subs. Coming for Sweden right now. It's Samuelson who's on now. A player that had been a regular for them at the 2015 World Cup and the Olympics. A series of injuries keeping her out from this last World Cup. Her first appearance in over a year for a former teammate of Heather Arana's at Arsenal. And Yanogi as well coming on. She's made her debut in January and has been climbing the charts quickly. So six subs in total made by Sweden now tonight. The U.S. have made four. And Yanogi's a spark plug off the bench. Player that's so good running at the opposition. Sofia Jakobsen. Space there for Kalashi to chase, and Sabra cleans it up. And Nair sends it right out. Well, this thing has a really different feel to it in the last 10 minutes or so. The first 70. Jakob City getting a dangerous cross in. Who is defending there? Moran comes away with it. Williams wants the ball to chase. 
Not the right angle. And look, it can be part of the substitutions. You talked about the break of rhythm that happens when the when players come into the match. But I also think as soon as Sweden scored that goal, it becomes more difficult for the U.S. to play out. They're under more pressure mentally. Now the second goal comes in, and they just don't look as confident when they're trying to play out the back. The resolution has to be there. View from short. Lloyd wants it through. She's going to get it. Fly comes up for offside. The play's dead. You said in the first half, as you take a look back at the offside decision here. And the ball just comes late. No pressure on Pew. You know where Lloyd's going. Put that ball out earlier. Samuelson not able to connect the pass with Yanogi. When, when it was 3-0 early, you said, listen, if you're sweet, don't, don't shut it off. Keep right. going. You're going to learn from this. Is it similar for the U.S. now? Yes. Just keep going, learn from it, even if you're making mistakes. Exactly. You're exactly right, John. And that's playing under that pressure when things aren't going as smoothly. Can you still be brave and play out of the back? Can you still be smart in the decisions that you're making to allow your team to find space, to break down the opposition? That's going to be the challenge with any manager coming in to tell his team to continue to play the way he sees them ultimately playing come Olympics. We'll have a game this weekend in Jacksonville against Costa Rica. That will end up the year. You see the U.S. men will be in action here in FS1 a week from Tuesday against Cuba. As the American soccer year comes to a close. MLS Cup this weekend. We saw the NWSL final recently. USL final coming up this weekend as well. we'll rest up and load up and go back out in 2020. That broke down there for Jakobsen. Pew stepping in. Sabert again looking at the really direct pass, but it's out past everyone. A different look for Sweden with some of these substitutions with Kalashi in that 10 roll. Very different from Aslani. She's not as, as slashy as a player, but she's going to connect. And you're seeing what impact Benison can have. Different questions being asked of the U.S. right now. Get over the top, short try to recover on the ball for Jakobsen. Gets across to the middle. Don Kemper was there. Jakobsen with the speed to keep it in play. Then trying to get in the middle for Kulashi. Flex going to come up for offside. As Yanogi was trying to get herself back onside. Catherine Nesbitt, who was an assistant referee at the World Cup, making that call. Well, what's he thinking now? First half, you said he would be just, thank you, I'm happy at 3-0. <laughs> What does he think about he's, things you know? He's like, hold on, give me the W in my first cap as a manager. No, I mean, with this team, I think you've got to continue to encourage them to play out, but you're sitting up 3-2, five minutes left in the match. You also have to have end-of-the-match tactics, and that's something that's important. Sabra stepping in there. He was able to keep under pressure, couldn't connect the pass with Pew. going to have a few more grays by the end of his tenure. It always seems to happen, doesn't it? Yeah, pass breaks down. You want to slip back to center back for a midfield position with these subs here in the second half. Teenager Benison stepping in there to try to win the ball. The Pew picks it back up for the U.S. Now can they keep it? Yeah, well, the step forward there, flying through in the end. In fact, Samuelson is now popping up on the right side, and Gloss has switched to the left back. Short intercepting that one. Couldn't quite pull off that move. It wins a foul in the end. Peter Gerhardsen, the Sweden coach, popping up off his seat to bark at the referee about it. And one of the things the U.S. did well in that first half was changing it from one side to the other. They've been stuck on this left side for the last 10 minutes or so. Whether it's Sauerbrunn dropping and getting the ball in a deep position so she can spring the other side. 
or a midfielder playing out. They've got to figure out how to get it over to the weak side. It comes down. Sonnet looking long. Williams was coming back forwards. It. Lloyd got the touch in front of the defender. Carter Lloyd now a chance to complete the hat trick. She's pushed off it. Mew is the late run. Her shot was blocked. It looked like a handball on Jakobsen, and it is. Well, initially, I thought this was going to be a poor pass, but Carly Lloyd does incredibly well to beat it. Erickson there, and then cuts across the middle. I think she's got to release that ball sooner. But you can't blame her for thirsting for that one. She's had such a good night. The U.S. will take this time. They'll take their time on a free kick. Lindahl's made seven saves officially tonight. Ten shots that she has faced on target. And Sullivan now standing over the free kick. She was looking over at Dr. Landonofsky to get instructions for it. Everyone back to defend for Sweden. They've left no one up for a counter. Clipped in Lloyd in the area. Couldn't get to it. And is on as far as sought it. The pass to Granogi now. Erickson on the near side. And that's good work tracking back there by Williams. To prevent that pass, Mewis into the space for Lloyd. Lindahl's going to come all the way out there to pick this up. Into the 90th minute now. Move from downstairs of two minutes. Stoppage time on the way. Well, really, all said and done, it's a pretty fun night. Five goals tonight. We've seen interesting things from both of these teams. Renewed. The pressure again. Williams picking it up. It was Sullivan doing the work up front. And it's going to be a free kick for the U.S. and a yellow card coming out. Elena Erickson showed it. And it's become incredibly open in these waning moments. The clip on Williams. And the U.S. just lost a bit of the control of the match in the second half. Into two minutes stop, it's time. You know, trying to catch her breath from that sprint out of her box up in the midfield. And Sullivan again to play this ball in. And Sonnet peeling away on the far side as an option. She'll get it. And she'll just stick this thing in the corner and try to milk some seconds. Sullivan, Sonnet, trying to return and does. Sullivan and Sullivan battling down there in the corner, and it's going to be a corner for the U.S. One minute exhausted. Here are the two in stoppage time. As Alexi Lala said, no one remembers the how, they only remember the what. Did you win or did you not? That man is almost there to a win in his first game as coach of the United States. Some of us remember the how. Time enough for one more attack for Sweden. Nogi there committing a foul. Coming up over the back of Sonic. Ninth full-time head coach in what is now the 35th year of international competition for the women of the United States. Monta Rakwandanovsky inheriting a World Cup winner, taking over for a FIFA World Coach of the Year. He get a W on opening night. Yes, he can. There's the final whistle. Three first-half goals, enough to withstand the second-half surge from Sweden. And a 3-2 win for the United States. Getting life underway under Vlatko Andonovsky. Allie, what's your takeaway from this? Biggest winner, Carly Lloyd. Besides Vlatko getting that W, 
That number nine role is up for grabs with Alex Morgan out with pregnancy. Yes, she's going to try to make a comeback, but Carly Lloyd made a statement tonight. She was incredibly active. I think the way that she helped the team advance in the final third was as important as her two goals. Could have been three with that penalty, but Carly Lloyd had a massive night. And look, you had four or five days of training. This is just the beginning. Let's not take anything out of context. This is a new era, and what this team looks like in three months, five months from now, is not what we're seeing tonight, but it's still a good start. And for that matter, a, a matter of weeks really going into the new year and opening camp in January and the Olympic qualifiers at the end of January, the clock ticking quickly as the U.S. tries to turn it around. Lloyd Naslani, former teammates actually at club level at Manchester City having a chat at the end there. Couldn't get her hat trick. Put the penalty up over the bar. But two goals and an assist for her. And a win for Vlatko Andonovsky in his first game in charge. His second game will come this weekend against Costa Rica. Well, that's all for us tonight here in Frigid Columbus. For Sarah Walsh, Heather O'Reilly, Alexi Lawless, Alex Curry, and Ali Wagner. I'm John Strong saying good night from Columbus, Ohio, as the United States wins the first game of the Vlatko Andonovsky era. 3-2 to two over Sweden.